Hello, today we are going to talk about how to create a VBSD 13.1 virtual machine and then we're going to install KDE on it. So let's go as fast as we can. So what is FreeBSD? It's an operating system. It's a uh, operating system derived from um, 386 PSD from the Jolices, which is was derived from the PSD BSDs from the Berkeley University of California Berkeley distribution. Bob Fabry, they got a Unix source license from AT and T. Bill Joy, Net2, the distribution from uh, UC Berkeley in 1991. Then uh, on Net2, William and Lynn Jolitz wrote enough replacements such that it uh, could run on Intel's x86, 386, so they created 386 PSD. And then from that, that was in uh, 1992. And then the first version of FreeBSD was released in November 1993. Okay, so in broad lines, kind of similar to the Linux operating system, GNU Linux operating system. Um, it's split into parts, what's called base and what is called ports. Okay, so let's install base and then we install enough packages from ports to have KDE running on it. So freebsd.org is the official website. Let's go there. Supported releases, the latest release production release is 13.1. We have three. Uh, we have the following files in here: announcements, release notes, install instructions, hardware compatibility release, readme errata, signed checksums. Let's look at each of these files. So, um, release checksum signatures for the AMD64 architecture, which is what I have. There's the ISO files. The biggest of them is the dvd1.iso, which is what I'm going to use. Then there's virtual machine images. There's um, one for QMU. I'm not going to use this. And then there's SD card images. Errata is about um, bugs, issues. Security advisories. Okay, then the release readme. So it says FreeBSD, an open source operating system derived from 4.4 BSD Lite 2 from UC Berkeley. It supports AMD64. It has a large collection of third party ported software called the Ports Collection. Over 306, uh, 336,000 ports, and uh, they are pre-compiled packages which can be quickly installed via the PKG binary executable. Okay, there's a download page. There's a Bugzilla. Uh, BSD install will be the executable that's going to install the system. We have man pages for everything that's inside of base. So base contains both the uh, kernel and the basic Unix uh, utilities and the user space around the kernel. So uh, executable such as ls or you know, chown or so file management uh, device devices 
Kernel module management, security, virtualization, etc. Okay, so we have a handbook which is the a manual that has one thousand pages. We'll use this. Okay, what else do we have? Hardware compatibility list, installation instructions, release notes, hardware notes, so supports AMD 64, supports AMD Ryzen. Okay, installation instructions. We can upgrade FreeBSD, we don't do that, or we can install. So installing FreeBSD chapter of the FreeBSD handbook provides more in-depth information, including a guided walkthrough with screenshots. So we should read the installation section from the handbook. Release notes. So this is FreeBSD version 13.1. The base contains kernel and user land. We're not going to upgrade. Beehive is the hypervisor. They have SSH, the open SSH v8.8.p1. device drivers, ZFS, NFS, UFS, the other file system, a bootloader, notes. So that was the release notes. And the last page, which is the release announcements. So they have OpenSSL, OpenSSH. So uh, many of the uh, things that you find in the FreeBSD ports are also available, for instance, in my Kubuntu 22.04 as the packages from the Ubuntu repositories. Intel Wi-Fi, ZFS, OpenZFS. Dedicated to the memory of one of the Jolitzes, the Bill, Bill Jolitz, co-creator of 386 BSD, which is the basis of FreeBSD1. TVD1 contains everything necessary to install the base uh, FreeBSD operating system, documentation, debugging, distribution sets, and small set of pre-built packages aimed at getting a graphical workstation up and running. I don't know how to do this. Okay, so it's hybrid can be written to USB sticks. There's um, Amazon images, Google Cloud images. Okay, so we need to go to the ISO images. And that was it. So now let's find the DVD one ISO in here. Is this one AMD 64DVD1.iso? I've already downloaded this file. And now let's go through the FreeBSD handbook in order to find out how to install it. This is a table of contents. Okay change log for the book. So we're going to learn FreeBSD basics, we'll install the system, we'll install packages and ports, and we'll install the X window system, and then KD. Okay, so this is how uh, key combinations are shown in the book. 
this is um, super user action command lines so command lines that need to be executed as root and these are command lines that need to be uh, executed as normal user with a percent sign liberal open source license so not gnu gpl or lgpl but the some form of PSD license without imposing restrictions on uh, typical to copyleft licenses can be used in closed products so not open source products okay 30,000 pre-built packages binary compatibility with Linux Okay, used by different commercial and companies. Brief history. So it has a Git repo with base, which is the kernel and um, the basic user land, which is called the SRC directory. There is a FreeBSD foundation with package install, we install binaries, binary pre-compiled packages. With make install, you can install ports from source code. Okay. We're going to create a virtual machine and install inside it. We're not going to back up anything. We're going to use DHCP for networking. We have the DVD one, which is this guy. We don't try to USB. We don't need to enter the BIOS of World Manager. And this is the FreeBSD put menu. So let's arrive there. It says new virtual machine from ISO. Um, yes. So FreeBSD 13.1 release DVD1 ISO. I couldn't find automatically the name of the distribution, so we go with FreeBSD, the newest one, 13.0, forward, maximum RAM possible, maximum CPUs, CPU cores possible. Um, let's go with 200, forward. FreeBSD Let's see if we can set it like this The default network is OK Finish FreeBSD OK The newer um, motherboard BIOS not UEFI CPUs we Don't want NUMA Okay, 15 CPU cores out of my 16. Memory 10 gigabytes. Uh, Virt IO for the virtual disk for the hard disk. Okay, ID CD ROM. Can't we make this SATA? Yes, we can apply. Correct network interface. EV touch USB graphics tablet. Spice. It doesn't do QXL, so we're going with uh, VGA. Apply. Begin installation. So it creates a small part of the hard disk, and then that hard disk will increase in size as needed until it reaches the maximum size of 200 gigabytes. This is the bootloader. Auto boots in 10 seconds.
Okay, we always boot multi-user. Uh, it asks me if I want to install. So yeah, I want to install um, with left, right, you move the current selection. So the current selection is down cancel with left. I'm going to move it at select. Continue with the default key. The default keyboard is English US. We test here. FreeBSD defaults to standard US keyboard. Uh, choose a host name. FreeBSD. Um, we don't want debug symbols for base. We don't want lib32. We don't want port stream. We don't want the, want the source of base. No tests. Uh, no UFS. No ZFS. I want UFS, which is the, def the default uh, file system before ZFS was added to FreeBSD. So we go with VF UFS. <coughs> Entire disk, MBR if you want that. 4 gigabyte uh, swap and the rest is just slash partition. Enter to finish. Uh, enter to commit. So TXZs are tar archives compressed with XZ. So base contains the uh, user land. Kernel contains the kernel. Kernel DBG contains kernel debug symbols. Lib32 support for running 32-bit processes, which I'm not sure we're going to use. So it extracts into slash these archives. And now it asks for a password. Let's put a really short password because we're going to type it thousands of times. Um, the only network interface card, IPv4 I want, DHCP I want. Would you like IPv6? Never. Uh, seems okay to me. Okay, Eastern EDT, yes. Skip, skip. Um, services, I want SSH. I don't want mouse in the terminal. Looks okay. Hardening, so as little hardening as possible. I disable send mail, but I don't know if this is enough to stop the send mail errors that get printed at the console and then send mail also makes reboots slower. Okay. Would you like to add users? Yes. Administrator. Uh, login group administrator. Other groups, yes. Will I want it to be a sudoer and to be able to change to the root user using su, su. Uh, the best one, we're going to change to GNU bash as fast as possible. On the administrator, correct. Password. Short password. Yes, I need to write yes, because this uh, question doesn't have a default answer. So questions with default answers are in square brackets and in parentheses, there's um, options that I need to manually type in. Add another user. No. Okay. Okay, let's look at the manual. We did this, we selected the base components, tar XZs, network, partitioning of hard disks, 
we did that. We didn't do ZFS. Installing distribution. TARS. Root password. Time zone. Services. Users. Okay. So we're at the final page okay so we edit user we set the root, pa root password host name network service system hardening time zone handbook we did everything so we select exit we press ok it's going to take some time to do this thing and then it will say that the installation has finished I don't want to open a shell, I want to reboot now. Okay. So the steps will be three for us. Where are you? Okay, so we want to um, install FreeBSD from the ISO. So this gives us the kernel and base. Before exiting, would you like to open a shell? No. Reboot, yes. Okay. Then we want to install um, XORG XRDP Bash and XORG. Like this. And the last step is. Uh, KD plasma desktop. Okay. So let's improve our working conditions. First of all, let's have it auto boot in less than 10 seconds. For that, I need a text editor. So how do I get a text editor? Other than the VI that's in base or EE, which is the easy editor. Okay. Network interfaces. Uh, the first thing to do is to go SSH. So we go if config the um, NIC network interface card is called VTNet0. It has an IPv4 address 192, 168, 122, 174. Let's um, connect using SSH. SSH administrator at 192.168.122. Dot 174. Uh, the first time that I'm connecting to this um, machine, I'm going to trust it. FreeBSD. I get the correct password, so now we can ignore the uh, Word Manager for a while. Okay. So we rebooted, we selected the IP configuration. Okay, what else? Virtual consoles, we can change with uh, Alt F1 
through Alt F8 if uh, X is not installed. If X is installed, we're we'll going to change with Control Alt F1. Uh, TTI 8, which is the ninth uh, console, is reserved for X. Okay, we don't go single user mode. We don't change the hardware terminal resolution. Uh, we have users. Uh, we change to the super user using SU. Okay, we don't need to add any more users. One is enough. Administrator, We're not going to remove users. We're not going to manage groups for a while. Permissions, we use the Unix standard RWX mode. We're not going to use uh, FreeBSD file flags, true flags. We're not going to use ACLs. Directory structure very similar to the one in um, uh, Ubuntu. There's man here for the hierarchy. Okay. There's um, slash is for base and slash USR slash local is for um, binary packages or ports. Okay, that's where make install from ports will install files. Okay, we know how to navigate the file system. We don't want to mount file systems. We view processes with a standard PS. There's stop in base. Killing processes with kill. Okay. Shells. We have selected the best one out of base, which is TCH. But I'm a Linux user, so I prefer GNU Bosch. I'm going to change the shell with this thing. And for that, I need to navigate to how to install packages. So let's go there. Installing packages. So we don't want to install from source. We don't want to install from FreeBSD ports. We're going to install pre-compiled ports, which are called binary packages. Pre-compiled packages. Okay. For that, we're going to use pkg, pkg install command. We find soft software with pkg search or with a where is command or search on fresh ports or on FreeBSD ports. Where is and the name of one file or with make search name of in a slash usr slash ports where is the source code of the ports Okay, getting started with PKG. The first time we need to bootstrap it. So with um, hash mark, we need to uh, be user. We will need to be root. So we go super user. And now we're root. Where my says root. PWD says well, my current directory, which is not slash home slash administrator, but is slash USR slash home slash administrator. Okay, ls so slash home is a sim link to slash USR slash home. Okay. So let's bootstrap pkg like this. We're going to run pkg. Um, the pkg is not installed. Yes. So it uh, fetches the newest pkg. 
and then it didn't fetch the metadata in the software repositories. Okay, so we want to go uh, this thing, pkg help install. So this is the manual page for pkg install. It has dry run similar to apt in Ubuntu. There's um, repos def defined. There's force minus F. There's minus Y similar to apt. Okay. So it does install similar to apt, it does upgrade similar to apt, it does update similar to apt, it does remove similar to apt, it does search similar to apt. So because we know apt, we know how to use PKG. The very first thing to do is to change from quarterly to latest ports branches. Let's do that. Uh, because we use console and SSH client, we can copy paste. Where are you? Um, let's survive first. So package install um, Emacs minus no X MC midnight commander. And what else is minimum minimum for me? Bash. Okay. So it fetches the metadata repository, metadata of the packages inside of the repository. Yes. So what's the quarterly and the latest? Latest are a bit newer uh, packages, while quarterly is branched at the start of each quarter in January, April, July and October. So quarterly is like default and safer and we're going to go with latest. For that we need to uh, edit this file and uh, replace quarterly this word with latest. Okay. Um, let's go bash just for the one of it. Um, let's copy the default configuration file of the repos, paste, and now let's edit it. The last file destination. Now we can middle um, click paste, which is not the X clipboard but the X selection. Okay, so at the end there's quarterly and it should be latest. Control X S, Control X C. Then we need to force an update. Update similar to apt downloads metadata from the repos about the packages. Minus F. Okay. Let's go do Upgrade all packages. So it found a newer version of PKG. Let's use that. Then it found other packages that can be upgraded, such as Emacs No X. Okay. Information about installed packages, PKG info PKG. PKG install package name. PKG upgrade, upgrades all packages. PKG audit minus F says which package is installed locally, is vulnerable and has an update. Auto remove similar to uh, apt. Okay. So now that we have bash, we can, we should change the 
uh, default shell of both users. So I'm at as the root user. Now let's change its shell. The way to do it is to change shell like this with this command. Okay, change shell for the user root. Okay, and now for the not root user, control shift B, change shell. I need. Okay, so we've updated the. We have both the user administrator and your root use the shell genu bash by default. We have MC, which is midnight commander. We have Emacs, which is the text editor. Now let's make auto boot faster. Emacs slash boot. Okay, loader dot conf. This file. Does not exist. Okay, let's see. PBSD faster auto boot. There's a manual page for loader conf. Uh, I can't edit it because I'm not root. Okay. Auto boot delay. This thing. So auto boot delay. Then equals. Then could be set to zero. Uh, to no did not work for me, so it just uh, disables auto boot. Right now it's set by default to ten. Um, zero is fast, let's make it one. Okay, new line, control XS, control X, C. Okay, now we have that. Let's go next. So we have the default shell, we know how to cut pipe, redirect standard output, uh, standard streams. We don't need a simple text editor because we've installed Emacs, this guy. Uh, manual pages, man command, man ls, man man, and man minus a, uh, k for a propose. Okay. Info for GNU info. Package install. Finding software, package search, where is, we've bootstrapped PKG, we've installed software already, okay, using the post collection, we're not going to use the post collection, no pudrier, X server, we need this. So how do we do it? There's an X server, there's X clients, which are the individual applications. There's window managers, which is uh, KWIN for us, or KD. We're going to install a desktop environment, which is KD. So first of all, install XORG. So Ctrl Shift V. Yes, 164 binary packages, 220 megabytes of download. It's going to automatically download uh, X servers, X libraries, and um, TWM and um, X term. T 
TWM being the minimalist window manager from the Xorg. There's fonts. Okay, so in our plan, we did this, we we did this, and the next one is XORG XRDP. Okay, so we're not going to install it from ports, we've installed it from binary packages. X configuration, we don't use uh, config uh, files. We need to do this, so to add the user administrator to the groups video and wheel, then we can start X to see how far did we get. So first it downloaded all of the packages, then it uh, installed them, and uh, since some of the packages don't have enough post script, post um, install scripts we are shown messages from the packages. So xterm says that it will use it UTF-8, great. Okay, we should use kern fdev rcpt mask equal three. Let's paste this thing to add Okay, at cccctl.conf. What? In case you're using a serial mouse or any other mouse that only works with this mouse and mouse D. So I don't use mouse D, so I need to go with this command line. Okay, so not three, but six. Let's see if we can get away with not uh, configuring this. Xorg fdev free type. We're not going to use Wayland. Okay, FC cache was run for us. So we need to add the user administrator to these groups. So administrator was not part of the group video, now it's part of it. We missed a P. Um, administrator is already part of the wheel group. Okay, let's try our luck. So we need to run start x as a non root. Okay, we have um, x, we have twm, which is the window manager. And then we have um, the X term. Great. Um, we're not going to use kernel mode setting. Maybe we need this. We'll write it down. Control V. We're escaping all of the talk about hardware, video, hardware input output hardware um, because we're not going to use the virtual machine for input we're go uh, and output we're going to use an rdp server so what's rdp is the microsoft's remote desktop protocol we're going to use a client which is called free rdp and the server which is called xorg xrdp so let's see how we install it. OK, 
Okay. So I need to have enabled SSH. I do. Let's see what's inside scrc.conf. Emax slash scrc.conf. It has SSHD enabled. Okay. Control X C to close. Let's install XRDP. We also need to install XORG XRDP. Yes. It wants Spider Monkey, which is the JavaScript engine from Firefox. Okay, so 37 um, binary packages to install. Okay, don't forget to edit the configuration. So this is the message from XRDP. So out of the messages from the packages, what's important for us is that an rc.d script was added inside slash etsy slash rc.conf we need to enable the service. Copy and then paste. And then don't forget to edit the start script. Copy. Control V. Okay, let's do that. So we need to edit um, etsy rc.conf and we need to have xrdp enable yes and xrdp sysman enable yes control access etc so inside etsy rc.conf xrdp enable yes xrdp sysman enable yes we did that. Okay. Then it's about time to start uh, to restart the machine such that uh, the newly added uh, services start. Uh, reboot. Let's see that the auto boot is faster. So it should stay just one second. Auto boot in one second, correct. And now we need a second um, console terminal where we use free uh, RDP. So for that, I use I'm on Kubuntu 2204. Okay, so I'm using free RDP nightly, which is installed into slash opt. So we go slash opt, free RDP nightly, bin, uh, there's a Wayland, free RDP, WL free RDP, and an X free RDP. So I'm on X11, need to go X free RDP, and I go help. So I'm going to prepare a command line. So I go with this. I need um, user this command line. So I need a user, no password. With, I'm going to go with 1080p. which is this. Control V. So with, I need to um, reserve some space for my uh, KD taskbar. 
So instead of 1920, I'm going with, with uh, uh, 1900 width and height is OK and ATP. Then V is the IP address 192, 168, 122 and 164. Let's see if it works. Connected via SSH. One hundred seventy four. What else we need? We need uh, speed, so we want slash video. What do we need? Uh, we want sound, sound, this. And in my case, it's uh, pulse. What else we want? Um, modern technologies. And only the BPP remains to be set. Clipboard is uh, on by default. You can disable clipboard redirection, but I don't want. And where is the BPP? Okay, so slash BPP depth 24 and speed. I need LAN as speed. How do I do that? Uh, Okay. Net work and LAN, which is best. Okay. Off screen cache NSC. This should be it for now. Let's see if it works. Control C, Control Shift V. I need to enter the password of the user administrator. I want to trust uppercase yes. And it says login failed. For user John Doe. Where's that user John Doe? Yes, the wrong username. Okay, back. Control Shift V. And I can see the X term that's configured in a start WM shell script. I'll disconnect. Let's edit the shell script. So it says, don't forget to edit the configuration files in uh, slash USR slash local Etsy XRDP and slash USR slash local slash Etsy XRDP slash VM.sh. Okay. Let's prove that we can affect what's shown by XRDP by default. by editing this file. Middle click paste. So in it's read only. Uh, let's look at the file ls uh, cd. Let's go there. So local Etsy XRDP ls minus LA. 
So start wm is not writable. So which mode plus writable by user, which is the user root. Okay. Start vm.sh and exec stops execution of this uh, script. This is a bash uh, shell script. So whatever we run before exec, the exec line will be executed. So we can go twm and background. Control access, control X C. Let's go with a reboot. So basically this line should be done if uh, TWM starts successfully. Okay, so it's already waiting for me to connect. Up to go back in history, enter. My password for user administrator. And we have TWM. So we demonstrated that we can uh, edit the start configuration of XRDP. Okay, so the next step here is to uh, install FreeBS uh, KD. So the last step. Okay, so I don't know how to install KD, so let's read the manual. So I installed XRDP, I enabled it, I configured a window manager, I could connect to it, I did see this thing. Okay. Now we need to go to KD. Once XDM, we don't use a desktop uh, manager. We use a desktop environment, but not GNOME. So KD, for that we need to install KD, a ton of packages. Copy, Control Shift V. Okay, so it says it needs to download two gigabytes of files, we'll download 657 packages. Okay. It doesn't have a global uh, minutes remaining counter for the entire um, PKG install command line just for the individual package. So we don't know how much this will take. So installed 25 packages out of 600, which is less than 10%. Okay, so let's read on. So to install from ports, we go make install. It's going to take days. I'm not going to do that. KD requires proc to be mounted. Yeah, we can do that. In the meantime. Um, how do we do it? Let's do it from uh, XRDP. Let's see how possible it is right now. So it's not possible because the resolution is too wide and it, we don't have a web browser inside of uh, the inside of uh, FreeBSD. Okay. So then um, let's SSH. Okay, administrator and 174.
Okay. So I need to enable slash proc by adding the line to slash etsy slash fs tab. I need to be root uh, emacs slash etsy fs tab. At the end, we add this line. We'll just rewrite it by hand. Proc space slash proc space proc fs read write zero zero. So proc slash proc proc fs rw zero zero. Okay. So we're at um, one third of the way. So next time when we reboot, we'll have slash proc or if you want now, then we need the bus enable in slash etc slash rc dot com. Let's do that. rc.conf dbus enable yes control shift v control xs xc we don't use a display manager so no sddm for us we don't need to enable sddm What's important for us is that um, if we were to have a .x init rc file, which we will not have, we need to place in it just this, just exact ck, which is probably console kit, launch session, start plasma minus x11. We don't use xdm. We don't use xfc, so we're stopping at this part through the uh, GBSD manual. Handbook. Okay. So, first half of the packages. After the packages are downloaded, they will need to be installed. Okay. So this says one key blocks, so three percent is used out of the 200 um, gigabytes. That's almost 200 gigabytes that are available on the slash partition. There's a dev FS, probably similar to the UDEV in Linux. So we're past half of the progress of downloading uh, packages. So let's pause the and uh, come back. Okay. So it finished downloading 657 packages. It's installed them. And now we have some messages from the packages. So blink, blink and what's for non, which wants for non GStreamer VLC. I don't use Kmail. Arc says something about 7zip and RAR. Smartly I don't use. So you should note down, so copy paste the output from messages from packages and read through, through all of these because they are important. I don't use sign. Sign. I don't use such a thing. So this is for scanners. I don't use sign. I don't use CoScript. I don't use webcams. Don't use coming. So this thing, start plasma five via x11 start x. 
with this line of command. So both the uh, FreeBSD handbook and the message from the package is the same. Okay. Control V here. GSM OpenCL Postgres Priglot Metis Dragon Player. Okay, should be enough. Now the that I have KD installed, I uh, have. Uh, edited slash rc.conf to have um, the bus enabled. Uh, the last step that remains is to edit uh, the start VM script again to tell it to not start TWM but to start Plasma. So copy Emacs Control Shift V and in here, I want this thing. Exact CK minus launch minus session space plus start plasma minus X11. Paste. And then let's kill this. Okay. Control X S to save, Control X C to exit, and the last reboot if we're lucky. Okay, we wait for the machine to reboot. Okay, so now we can connect via um, RDP. Let's make it a bit narrower. One eight in like this. Okay. So it starts um, KD. We have the KD desktop, which is called KD Plasma Desktop. Um, we don't seem to have 32 bits, or something is looking out at this icon. Maybe the speed is not okay. Okay, so Kate works, Dolphin works. The software center does not exist on FreeBSD, so it should not be pinned. So let's unpin it at least. Okay. System settings. So in system settings, let's do the things that we usually do, which is um, edge. Disable the screen edge. Uh, outer 15% apply. Okay. It has this problem that you need to press the start button to have the screen refresh. What else? We do fonts, always too big. Make all of them at least one pixel, sm one number smaller. Why? We want the best hinting possible. Apply. Start menu again. Cursors always too small. Let's make it 36. Apply. And it's chopped. The cursor is chopped. Let's make it white. It's okay like this. So this should be it. We have KD. 
a next step will be to install KDSRC build and to see which of the KD Git repos build correctly or not on this machine. So this was about how you can install FreeBSD on Word Manager and connect to it via RDP protocol such that you get copy paste. between host and guest without any um, VMware tools or virtual bo box additions or stuff like that. So we get copy paste by f for free for um, text and for files and we also get sound redirection so if we had Firefox in here we could watch YouTube. So let's do that. So we need into favorites the terminal. Where are you? Why can't I pin it to favorites? I don't know. Okay. Um, so let's install Firefox. Package install Firefox. There's no PKG. Why there's no PKG? Because the uh, path is broken. Why is that? Because we didn't edit the config files, so they are configured for um, slash bin slash sh, which is the built-in uh, born compatible um, shell, which we don't use, we use bash. So there's src, which has some aliases. We don't use this, so f8 to delete. There's a profile f4. So it says it, didn't, it doesn't set the path correctly. Then it doesn't say that the editor is Emacs. Then it tries to run dot shrc, which we don't want. Then it does all sorts of other things that we don't need. We don't need fortunes. So setting the path and my editor and pager is enough. Control uh, F2 to save. We inside the editor of Midnight Commander. Escape. And then we need a bash RC file to exercise all of these. So emacs dot bash RC shebang. Okay, and we go source tilde slash dot profile. Control XS XC LS again to see what we have in here. So we have a, a dot profile and a dot bash RC. Okay, let's open the console again. Add to favorites, this guy, yes. Okay, uh, I don't want contact in favorites. Uh, okay, no way to remove things. That's ugly. And no discover. Okay. So uh, um, I did this only for the user root. So let's change to that.
correct uh, path environment variable. So now we can run pkg install Firefox. It refreshed the package metadata. Is installing Firefox 3, 246 megabytes, so a quarter of a gigabyte of space used and 55 megabytes of download. Okay. So it's installed, it has a huge message. So about networking. Who knows? Maybe we're lucky. So let's open a new private window. Uh, let's go YouTube big buck money. Okay. How do I get that? Let's make it okay small. And we have sound. Yes, and uh, OBS can pick it up from the hardware host machine. Okay, so this was it. This was about how to install a FreeBSD plus KD inside of a virtual machine in order to develop for KD. Thank you.